<laughs> what does this one do? This is yes, man. It's like yeah, yeah. he's greasy. Right? I couldn't agree with you more completely. Hey, welcome to the computer <laughs> continuing winemaker series here at Wine of the Month Club, and we have been waiting, trying, calling, emailing, and finally, we got Mr. Monty Paulson in, and we have fun things to talk about with Pat Paulson Winery. Uh, depending on your age, you may or not may not know your Monty's father, Pat Paulson, who ran for president in 1968. Yeah, did he, he really run? Won. Did he really? <laughs> did, did he actually run? Do you know? Did I he, think he actually did run. I mean, you know, there were actual, you know, um, grassroots. Um, uh, he was on the ballot. He's definitely yeah. on the ballot. Oh, was he on the yeah, ballot? Yeah, he was in on the ballot in some places. States, it was yeah. a, but my favorite part was the straight-talking American Government Party, also known as the Stag Party, yeah, well, that's which that. will live in memoriam forever for me. <laughs> well, we still have him running. Dead or alive, he's a write-in candidate. He actually got more votes in 2008 than one of the candidates in one of the precincts in Michigan. Oh, that's really funny. We had a couple of fans there that started up some grassroots. I think that's great. You well, know. both Ed and I have this... Um, memory of your father in the winery and we went to tastings and traveled with him many times but you you were there then in the beginning that was yeah. uh, when did you, when did you start working with your father in the vineyard in the vineyard we bought our land in sonoma in the early 70s mm -hmm. and even though i was probably about eight years old i had to go out and work in the vineyard so i did that through high school <laughs> junior high and he paid you uh, of course Oh, no, I'm sorry. I got to eat. <laughs> yeah, got to eat right? <laughs> he paid me in wine. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, we we were making wine since nineteen uh, the mid seventies, and built our own winery in nineteen eighty. Okay, and, so um, I worked in the vineyards since the seventies in the winery since uh, about nineteen eighty, and then I became assistant winery soon after we got the winery going, and then eventually winemaker. And you got your, you went to school. Obviously, at some point, to learn how to make wine, unless it's just like Ed making it ad hoc. <laughs> no, no you, I've got a degree from UC made, Davis yes, in UC wine Davis, making. Which is a great school for that. It's yes. the best in the world. Yeah. So, I know the winery went dormant for a little while. What years was that? Uh, we sold our original property in the early 90s, but we kept making wine. I moved it from Sonoma over to Napa. Now we're doing some projects out in Livermore and Sonoma and Napa and Texas. And China. Texas. Texas, yeah, yeah. West Texas. I'm West Texas, right. Is that there's Lubbock? Some, Lubbock, Texas. Yeah, you know there's some. I, well, yeah, because I did a, I did a Roan well, blend a really from there. Good, that was a really good Roan blend from yeah, there. I forgot who good. it was from. O'Neill or something like that, or McNeil? Okay. Mc, McPherson. McPherson. Yeah. yeah. You know Kim? Yeah, Kim. Yeah, I've met guy. Kim. I've worked with him. So these now are made at the facility. Some of them you're vending out. Some of them you made. This one particular juice is made in Chile. So tell me about the EBGB brand of the Pat Balsam wine. EBGB brand. It means something, something secret we can't tell yeah. because there may be mixed company watching this video, mm -hmm. but you come out to the winery, we'll let you know what it means. But it's our appeal to the millennials. It's younger, it's hip, it's a groovy, it's a non-traditional label, and the wines are made to be soft, rich, but very soft, very fruity, very drinkable cocktail wines, before dinner wines. I get that, yeah, definitely. Uh, softer for sure, fruit forward for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This is uh, interesting. And this is Chilean though, right? From the Valley Central. It's Chilean. We also have California wine going into the EBGB brand. Whatever mm -hmm. fits the brand, which is anything that's soft, fruit forward, easy to drink. Wow. You know what? When that's changed, it's opening. It's getting better. Right? Yeah, it's it opens up. Oh, you actually. Yeah, well, I haven't, right been, you know, I haven't changed in years. <laughs> Don't go change <laughs> just to please me. <laughs> Don't go changing. Well, I'm going to stay on on, on Chile then. I think we've got a second one from Chile. That's right in your hand. So there. this this is a relationship you have you have with a in Chilean winemaker and winery owner that I've done business with, import and export for oh god, ten or twelve years. And finally, we decided, why are we making wines for other people? Let's make our own. So I went down there and worked with them. Uh, it's Antawara Wines which makes mm -hmm. great oh, sure. wines. You probably yeah, have seen some, some of We've done some wines, yeah. as a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this was made with them. Um, Pablo and Jaime are good friends. This wine... Uh, Paul was, and Jim, is they all come, come with them? Jaime. Paul and Jim, okay, right, Pablo and Jaime. <laughs> uh, this was our first venture in the premium side of it. Delicious wine. Really, really good. Our first shot out got picked as one of the best Chilean <laughs> cabs of the year by Wine and Spirits magazine. This is classically Chilean. 
and Maipo, which I don't see a lot of Maipo's wines in here. We haven't had done a Maipo wine in a while. We've got Valley Central, Maui. We're doing a lot of Valley Central lately. Yeah. Um, and and uh, Maipo, God, we haven't done that in a long time. No. So yeah. when the, when your tasting room is in Livermore? We have a tasting room in Livermore. We're doing a lot of it's business beautiful. out there. Uh, Livermore is a great area. It's like Sonoma was uh, 30, 40 years ago mm -hmm. when I grew up in Sonoma. You go out there, you meet the winemaker, they're sitting behind the bar, you don't have to make reservations, the well, tasting fees are very limited and reasonable, mm -hmm. if at all, and great crowds. People come out to taste and have good wine, they don't come out to impress anybody, and basically they're impressed by the wine, so that's all that. And he's in, uh, near Concanon, right next to Concanon, right? Well, yeah, I mean, some of the oldest and best wineries in California, like Concanon, have been there for a million years, the Mirasus, you know... Um, are in, were in that area in the beginning. Steve Mirasu still has a winery there, as far as I know. I believe so. We are halfway between <coughs> Concanon and Wente. Yeah. Those are a couple Wow, names. that's a couple of names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, they have LeBlanc de Blanc still over there at the Wente. Oh, oh yeah, they do. They, <laughs> they do. still make LeBlanc de Blanc? Somebody came in and talked about that the oh, other day. Oh, that's funny. Yes. So you're, you're getting traffic in the tasting room, and uh, bus loads, are these like tour groups too? Or tour what? groups, limos. A lot of locals. It's a place called Tesla Vintners. There's two other wineries on the spot there. Oh, Tesla. They make a car, too, don't they? They, they, they <laughs> Different name. It's oh. Tesla after the uh, the, the electronics, uh, oh. per, uh, the historical Tesla. Um, but we've had the Tesla Car cr Club out there oh, on the property. Oh, that's fun. So, great. so this wine here, you opened up my Black Label series. It's wines that are all 8 to 12 years old. Well, it's an 06 as it is, which is that's, an interesting strategy. These that's days. my youngest of the bunch. I have a 2003. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. concept behind the black label is to... To get wines that are ready to drink now. They're not old wines. They're not tired wines. They're wines that I specifically select mm -hmm. through other wineries that I work with in my consulting capacity or wines that I've kept around specifically to be released as older wines. And they're only really released great. if they're... They're up to it, and they still have life left to them. And well, this one certainly does. I mean, I... No question. Oh, I mean, absolutely. This is, this is amazing. Man, I never guess this wine is now what? You know, Eight seven years, years old. old. Yeah. You know? It's got tons of fruit, tons of acid still. And when nicely balanced as well, which is not always the case. And it ought to age for a few more years. Uh, which easily. Is, which is the point of the whole series on it. And it's a chance for people to try a wine that's... Almost ten years old, or something. This one's actually changing as it's sitting in the glass. It's got much more fruit forward. Yeah, it develops. That they all these older wines. That's why you collect and save old, older mm -hmm. wines. Right. A lot of people do that. Is they just they're so much fun as they sit in the glass and they evolve and you, right. you get these flavors and aromas that you don't get in a younger wine. So, well, it's a few fun. months ago when his dad came out here, we tasted some wines that were. 30 and 35 years old that were Wine of the Month Club selections, wow. some of which were absolutely mind-boggling. Some of these wines were like five and six bucks, and they lasted 30 years. Yeah. And, oh, and they didn't have... They didn't I come found from... them in a cellar. In my, seriously, my neighbor's house that was on for sale, we went into the cellar, I pulled a bottle out, and all 150 wines in this guy's cellar were from my club, going back to the 70s. Wow. Yeah. So I want to amazing. come... Come to that party. It was, it was unbelievable. <laughs> so I mean, it I asked, was shocking. I asked this question off camera, and that was uh, two nights ago. I opened a bottle of folks, and you know you've tasted the uh, Reserve Red that we feature from Pat Paul's and Vineyards, which has been a great hit here. And I brought a bottle out last night for my daughter and my son-in-law. It's hard for me to say, by the way. Well, not hard, but it's new for me to say. And, it's hard uh, for them. They've <laughs> only been married for like six, four or five months. Uh, so I asked my daughter, I said, do you know who Pat Paulson is? She goes, oh, yeah, huh? like, you know, she wanted to humor me, make sure that. Really? And then she says, uh, I go, and I knew she didn't know. And I go, that's Ace Weems, Adrian Lissinger. She goes, oh, yes, now I remember because he was in Get Smart. So do people that come to Pat Paulson Vineyards, how many, what percentage would say knew your father or knew of him as a comedian? And Oh, they come to the tasting room? Yeah. Uh, from the under 30 crowd, approximately <laughs> 0 to 1%. <laughs> <laughs> and the problem with the older crowd is is either either they're, well, you're either too young to remember them or you're too old to be able to remember anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they say they remember what you said. I can't remember, remember what he just said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is the... Uh, he just insulted half the Wine of the Month Club members, but that's okay. The that's all right. That's Make true. it up on the wine. So this one, this Heritage really, Selection, really that's my flagship brand. This is a 2011 Napa Cabernet, 100% mm -hmm. uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Just got a gold medal 
at the San Francisco Chronicle Wine Competition. Just getting to release it now as we film this. Uh, it's it's really coming into it. Did you hear that, folks? We are the release. This video is releasing this. this is that what you said? You are the first. <laughs> the first time this has been tasted by human beings. It's unbelievable. Since it went into the bottle. I get a wonderful dark chocolate. Yeah, it's really it's chocolate mocha. It's got some sort of deep dark cherry raspberry. And you know what I love most about this wine is the press is like ragging all over the 2011 vintage. You're going to read all kinds of stuff that says, oh, it's not that good, it's this and that. I have had so many great 2011s of which this is probably the best one, and I'm going, what are you guys talking about? What's wrong with you people? Well, what is the problem with the 2011 that, they, that they're saying? I don't know. Oh, a lot of mold. That was it. it. There's it, a lot of mold. It rained towards the end of harvest. Mm. Now, this was picked uh, just south of Rutherford, a nice warm area. Mm -hmm. We got it in before the, the rains, and it was it was perfect. It's gorgeous. So it, I don't know what the problem is. Yeah, well, we, don't, we don't have a problem. They we don't have a problem. problem. <laughs> well, it's the, good press, the, the wine press thinks it has to say something bad in order to be viable. You know, sure. they can't con they can't really make, you know, good th can't say things good about wines too often because then they won't look like they're serious. Sure. So I got a gift last night. This is serious. Okay, Ooh, some serious. serious. My wife had an event at the house. She had a bunch of people. Somebody brought us a gift. They brought us Balzer's book, California oh. Wine. I so have I, that book. I, I, exactly. I, I looked at it. It was signed by Bobby. <laughs> it was written, the guy did it in 1978. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say 1980. <laughs> You know, I, I told my wife, I said, half of these wineries really exist anymore. Why and, they, and the other uh, half were people that are dead. So we determined <laughs> that they took it off their shelf and wrapped it and gave it as a gift. <laughs> so this, uh, what, tell us about the cattle company. This is, uh, this is this, a wonderful label, and it's another Napa Valley juice. Yeah, absolutely. It's a new project that I'm working on. I am winemaker for it. It's not under the Pat Paulson Vineyards label, um, but it's a project I'm working for with a... a a historian out of Napa Valley who has researched the cattle companies in Napa. Before there were grapes, it was it was cattle con, con, country. I was going to say company, but it wasn't a. I don't know what it was. It was a bunch of cows running. Around. But <laughs> that the sounds whole, more of the truth. The whole focus of it is to have an ultra premium wine that's geared towards high end steakhouses. Just this this Cabernet Sauvignon that's mm -hmm. going to age forever. A premium package a tribute to the cattle ranchers of the years passing, tribute to Napa Valley's history. Mm -hmm. It's really and, good. And it's good. Well, you all been great. But Mom. you know, it's kind of fun because I can see myself going to uh, Morton's or something and having a, oh, yeah. have a, a, you know, a glass of cattle company cab or maybe a whole bottle. I don't know. Depends on how you drink. This is, <laughs> and who you're with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really, really nice wines. I've, seeing Pat Paulson Vineyards back, uh, not that he went away, but we haven't seen the label around, and so we were so excited to do the Reserve Red and show these wines for you guys and hope things are well up there at, at Livermore. Yeah. Well, we've got the tasting room in Livermore. Okay. We make the wine Napa, Livermore, Sonoma, and a few other places, as I mentioned. Uh, but it's, it's fun to really bring out some of these new wines, the new sub-brands that we're doing with the different label designs and concepts. And... Uh, the reaction to it has been great. There's well, they should. Their wines are really good. I mean, they're fabulous, all of them, and, and great uh, price points as well. Yeah, um, I, I get people that come into our tasting room all the time, and, and they, they're so appreciative. They've mm -hmm. tasted the wines over the years, but they haven't seen them around as much lately. And in this era, you have all these small family wineries going out of business. Yeah, it's like such a tough racket. My family's getting back into it. You know, that's great. So we've also got a an event space in Oakland we call EBGB, named oh, okay. EBGB. after our wine. You're not allowed to know what that's about. It's EBGB, the underground <laughs> uh, wine bar. Yeah. Call it there. A lot of fun stuff going in there, showing off wines and stuff. And, boy, I want to thank that's you guys. That sounds like fun. Now, i got two questions, right? parting questions. One is, are you bringing back refrigerator white? No. Okay. That's that's next. We right. brought back American Gothic Red, which yeah. we oh, yeah. may that's be able to feature cool. here sometime. Yeah, I'd like to do that. Um, Refrigerated White was one we did at the time. It was the first of the, call it the humorous labels. Right. In, you know, any just a plain yeah, white wine that fits in a refrigerator. Yet, right? yeah. And now every time you turn around, there's... He was like way ahead of his time, actually. Oh, yeah. Right. No. And uh, we had a White House White. That oh, had the, that. the great seal of Pat Paulson. Oh. This is humorous <laughs> cartoon great, yes. seal, the almost president of the yeah. US. Yeah, right, right, right. I tried to bring that back, and apparently they're a little stricter with this administration. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> uh, well, you know, misleading comments and this and that, and, and trying to imply <laughs> that you're somehow in the White House. And we'll see That's if we get funny. that done. Right. And 
maybe we can feature that here on be Wine of the Month. Oh, that'd be we get great. That thing I'd through. love it. And the second question is, you got anything for Ed to do because he's been hanging around here too much. We are accepting <laughs> applications for seller work. We need some people to stomp some Maybe grapes. a seller at it. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I live for. Okay, good. <laughs> and you actually did some wine sales uh, trips with my father. Yeah, that's yeah right. absolutely. Yeah, a ball. It was a lot of fun. You know, he was quite the character. Matter of fact, I told the story about when we were stuck on the on an interstate in Colorado. Stop dead. And I told Pat, I said, why don't you go out and do a routine? He said, what am I going to say? I said, look, you're just running around, you know, going crazy because we're sitting here. People are stopped. So I ran around to all the cars and said, uh, Pat Polson's in here in our, in our van, and he's going to do a little routine. Of course, everybody said, great, because this was 82, 83. You know, what's funny is that next month, or April, we're featuring a wine from Pedrincelli. Jim Pedrincelli was in that van, too. Oh, that's so oh, my funny. God. Here's a, here's a short story about Pedrincelli. Pedrincelli's been a family friend of ours. Oh, I really dearly. love Jim. Jim's our a great guy. First, first wines, our first Cabernet Sauvignon wines in the early 70s were made at Pedrincelli Winery. Oh, home. that's something. And we went what out recently... And I got to think about that. I ran into Julie Pedrincelli at one mm -hmm. of the tastings. And I said, Julie, I was just going through some old pictures, scanning them for posterity. And I found some where we uh, had somebody had done a photo photo shoot at Pedrincelli Winery yeah. with my father and Jim Pedrincelli. Oh, that's something else. And I said, We'd you know, that was really it. interesting. She said, why don't you send those to me? And we got talking more. So we went out there. We took our new wines. We sat down with Jim. Mm -hmm. He came out with a bottle of one of the first wines that had been made with our grapes. Oh, he signed so it. We did great. a little photo shoot. And that sort of thing about the the families, Sonoma County families out there, the Pedrincellis and the Paulsons doing so business great. forever. It's, can we? Uh, can I get one of those pictures? Because we would love to write that in the next newsletter. That'd be great. Tying it back to this month. What a great story. We'll I met Jim day, Pedrincelli 40 years ago at the winery. He had just owned it for like 10 years with his brother when they bought it from their dad. You know, and everything was so new and exciting and whatnot. And he's just one of the greatest guys I have ever met. I absolutely love the guy. He's just an amazing character. I tried and very I love hard to, to get some, you know, Mark Abraham, who's been selling this Oh, yeah, for Mark's a, a great years. guy. I've known Mark for a million he years. He came in, you know, I've known him forever. And I, I got to buy something from you because it's been I've so long. I've been telling you that. <laughs> well, but they bought them are low, but it was like 10 years ago. You know, the prices, you know, the prices aren't low, but... This that friends wine, which friends see the whole thing we tied together. Oh, Pen and Shelley, wow. the Paulsons, the wine's called Friends. This is incredible. This is incredible. Uh -huh. Can you do like a halo up here <laughs> somewhere? Like, you, you know, can you do that? We got to talk more about that. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that sounds fun. Though. Well, it's a pleasure having you, Monty. Thank you so much for joining us, and and uh, look forward to having you come back down the trip. And and, and let's get Gigi we'll over here to. Yeah, to come we got Gigi. Over here? Come on, introduce yourself, Gigi. Gigi handles all of our marketing, and she is my muse that inspires me to make I wine. I couldn't agree. Isn't that great? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is on voice activation now, so it's going to be <laughs> talking to you. <laughs> yeah, I handle Monty. <laughs> She's my handler. How about this guy? I make the wine. When he's she lucky. makes me behave. What is this? Hello, everybody. Hello, oh. everybody. All right, here we go. Yeah. We got lots of toys. Okay. Here. Thank you for having us. We're really yeah. delighted. Apparently, we've been you. swallowing and not sipping here today. <laughs> <laughs> cheers. 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 Here. Let's do a double cheers. Cheers.